What is up guys, it's your boy Swolam here, back with another classic WoW Hardcore video. So today we're covering how to make gold while leveling in classic WoW Hardcore on the official Hardcore servers. I'm going to be doing this on a level bracket basis, so we're covering how to make gold from level 1 to level 10, level 10 to level 20, and doing this all the way until level 60. Based on that, this video will be divided into 6 segments, and there will be timestamps to every single one of them, and YouTube chapters, so you can easily navigate to the part that you care about if you're level 1 to level 10, 10 to 20, or even 50 to 60. This will be pretty long of a video, so sit back, relax, and once again use the chapters to skip ahead to the parts that you're interested in. Either way, let's make some gold. Hello and welcome back to a brand new video series that I am doing for the launch of official hardcore servers. In this video series, I will cover gold making in certain level brackets every single day, starting with level 1 to level 10 for this video, and 10 to 20 in tomorrow's video, and continuing that format until we get to max level. The purpose of this video series is to give you guys some ideas for where to farm gold and how to make some gold, while leveling up, and spacing it out somewhat according to what level most people will be. I am assuming that most people will be level 10 on the first day, and probably level 20 on the second day, and then it will start getting some diminishing returns, since not everyone plays 24 hours a day. Also, if you want more gold making advice, or simply hardcore content in general, I will be streaming my entire hardcore journey live on Twitch and on Kick, and you can find the links to both of those in the video description. I will be live every single day, almost 24-7, so feel free to stop by and ask me any questions you have. So today we have how to make gold from level 10 1 to level 10 in Classic WoW Hardcore. This is arguably going to be the most boring level bracket for this type of video, but it's worth covering either way and it will give you an indication and an introduction to the video series. Since we are focusing on level 1 to level 10, you should not expect to make lots of gold in this level bracket, but there are certainly a lot of things that you can do in order to make more gold than most people. Let's take a look at mob grinding spots first. Grinding mobs can in many cases be either faster or just as fast as leveling, even from level 1 to level 10, especially in a launch environment, where many quest mobs will be highly competitive, in which case, sometimes it's actually better to just grind mobs in a location where there is less competition. So let's take a look at some time so let's take some time to look at some materials that are worth targeting while grinding mobs while leveling in this level bracket, including a couple of locations for where to farm them. I will try to include as many different locations as possible to give some alternatives to everyone regardless of race and faction. So first off we have small eggs. These are used for cooking and are arguably one of the cheapest and easiest ways for people to skill up cooking. Plus they can be used for the Winter Veil event coming in December, which is actually coming up pretty soon after the launch of these official hardcore servers. There are only a handful of locations where these eggs can be farmed under level 10, but there are multiple locations in the level 10 to level 20 bracket, which we will be covering tomorrow. Now other types of meat for cooking are also definitely worth looking out for. The exact type of meat here, here depends on your faction and race, like for example for a lions, humans and gnomes have easier access to boar meat than night elves has, just like orcs and trolls have easier access to boar meat than torrents and undead players. Torrents also has way easier access to strider meat from all the plain striders in Mulgore. Cooking will be a profession that a lot of players will opt to go for during their hardcore journey, and not everyone will take the time or effort to farm the materials that they need by themselves, so they will opt to buy it from other players, whether that is through trading or the ocean house, so cooking materials is a pretty safe way to secure yourself some early pocket change. You also have a very obvious one, linen cloth. Yeah, this is incredibly obvious, you can just find any humanoids really, and they can drop them. These linen cloth can either be sold directly, as people need them need linen cloth to make bandages for example, and first aid will be a profession pretty much everyone will have, or you can even use the linen cloth for tailoring, which we will cover in just a little bit. You also have light feathers. This one is more of a long term farming possibility, as they will be needed and used by mages for slow fall later down the line. 
So let's talk about professions with gold making potential in this level bracket. Obviously having herbalism and mining will benefit you greatly, but they both take time to skill up, plus they will be very competitive. That being said, engineering and alchemy will most likely be the most popular professions on these hardcore servers, as they directly increase your survivability, and they need herbalism and mining materials, respectively, in order to skill up. Personally, I would not choose herbalism and mining on launch, simply due to the competitiveness of the nodes in the open world, but if you are starting a week or two after the launch, then it might be worth considering. Now picking up skinning will also offer you more raw gold from skinning beasts and vendoring the leather. Even though this is not really significant at lower levels and gets better and better as you move up in levels, but it could still be worth setting up. Level 1 to 10 is more about setting yourself up for the future and future success anyway. Another great way to make some extra pocket change in the early levels is crafting bags. Pick up tailoring and use the linen cloth that you just farmed and make some 6 slot bags and sell them just under the vendor price for bags. This way you capitalize on people who were unlucky and did not loot all of their bags while leveling while also providing those people with cheaper bags than they would have gotten by buying them from the vendor. It's literally a win-win where you make gold by helping other people save gold at the same time. Doesn't really get much better than that. Personally, I usually speed to level 1 to 10 as quickly as possible in order to make more gold later down the line, but that only really works for those of you aiming to hit a somewhat high level pretty quickly, so if you plan on taking a more relaxed leveling approach, you can actually use these methods to make some very decent pocket change during your early leveling adventure, and the later you start, the more gold materials from for example herbalism and mining will actually be worth. And that's pretty much what I have for you today, once again come check me out on stream, where I am most likely live right now streaming hardcore, and stay tuned for how to make gold from level 10 to level 20 tomorrow, which should be a lot more interesting. Until then, if you, if you really want a head start on how to make gold on these hardcore servers, I have also made a 134 pages long gold making guide, which you can find the link to in the video description, and by using the code SOLHEIM you can get that guide for half price. This guide contains the very best gold farms both to do while leveling and at max level, plus some insane investments I have used in the past to make tens of thousands of gold in pure profit. For now though, leave a like and comment down below if you enjoyed this video, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again very soon. So today we are covering how to make gold from level 10 to level 20 in Classic WoW Hardcore. This is a daily video series I am doing for the launch week of Hardcore Classic WoW, where I cover how to make gold in different level brackets to help you guys minimax your gold making while leveling up. Now once again, I also want to say that I will be streaming my entire Hardcore journey live on Twitch, and I am most likely live right now when you're watching this video, so come by after the video and say hello. The link is down below in the video description, or go to twitch.tv slash soulheimyt. Now yesterday we covered level 1 to level 10, which is probably the most boring level bracket for to cover for gold making, and today we have a lot more stuff to go through, so let's get into it. First let's cover different locations that you can grind for mobs while also farming for gold at the same time, because let's face it, from level 10 to level 20 you can actually level up effectively, like very effectively, while grinding mobs at the same time, pretty much leveling just as fast as you would by questing by not needing to complete uh, to compete for quest mobs or quest objectives. You can also farm for specific items required for quests and sell those items to people doing the quest for those items, which we will also get into. So here we go, let's cover farms on an item by item basis. First up you have wool cloth, this will be wanted by people skilling up first aid, plus eventually you can even hand in different types of cloth for experience and reputation which all starts with wool cloth. Wool cloth can be farmed by pretty much all humanoids above level 16, but the mobs in this level bracket that drop wool cloth will also drop linen cloth, so it's really a roll of the dice if you get linen or wool. Both will be useful and will definitely sell, but wool will get you more gold than linen, based on higher demand for wool. 
Alternatively, if you have tailoring, you can also turn the wool cloth into eight sort of bags, and once again sell them slightly under the vendor value or the vendor price for eight sort of bags. I will also include my favorite five wool cloth farms for level 10 to level 20 on the screen right now to give you a couple of examples for where to farm for both factions. You also have light feathers, which we covered briefly in yesterday's video, and these will be even more profitable this time around as you can combine them with farming wool cloth and small eggs at the same time. Light feathers will not sell for the highest amount of gold, but there will definitely be a constant demand for them, and it will give you a steady gold income over time. Now, back in Classic WoW and Season of Mastery, I made 10 gold per hour while leveling from level 10 to level 20, simply by farming light feathers, so there's at least some gold to be made here. Now personally, there's only really two locations worth highlighting for light feathers in this level bracket, one for each faction. You have this one for example in Darkshore, and you have this one in the Barrens. So let's cover some quest materials you can farm for and sell to people that are doing their quests. First off, you have tough condor meat. This is related to a quest in Red Ridge Mountains on the Alliance side where people need to acquire five of three different types of meat, including these tough condor meat. This means that everyone doing this quest will want five tough condor meat, and these aren't the most annoying ones to farm, which means as long as you just um as long as you sell them cheap enough, some people might buy them from you just to get their quest complete. Now this could also allow you to stand in one place, farm mobs, get experience, and most of all, get the gold at the same time. Personally, I like farming them in the circle outlined right here, as they seem to have a dynamic hyper spawn effect making them spawn slightly faster, or they share some respawns with the black drakes. Next you have the gore tusks in Westfall. These are very useful to farm because a lot of alliance players will be questing in Westfall at some point, which means there will be a big demand for items related to quests in that zone. Now these gore tusks in particular, they are very interesting, because they drop two different items that are used in Westfall quests. They drop their gore tusk snouts and gore tusk livers. Now players need three gore tusk snouts for their Westfall stew quests, and they need eight gore tusk livers for their gore tusk liver pie quests. The most profitable item here will probably be in the Gore Tusk Liveries, as they have the lowest drop rates, and you need more of them. These materials are also good to farm for, because not only are they used in the quest, but the rewards from those quests are cooking recipes, meaning these materials will also be used in further skilling up cooking, creating an endless demand outside of just completing the quest. Keeping in line with materials required for cooking, you also have crawler meat and clam meat, both looted from for example crabs. These are used to skill up cooking, usually past 95 skill, and upwards towards 150 skill. Sadly, horde characters don't have the easiest access to this material, you pretty much have to kill crabs outside or inside BFD for it, but if you're playing alliance, you got a couple of very good locations to farm for them right here in Darkshore, and Westfall respectively. Now, for the most part, these cramps are also not part of any quest, except for the Darkshore ones, but even then there should be plenty of crabs available. At the left circle in Westfall, there's even a hyper spawn effect on the cramps making them spawn and respawn very fast, making it a good farm both for experience and for gold. Another decent gold farm will be hunting dust devils in Westfall for those magic dusts, an item that you can use to sleep a mob to basically make it CC'd. This is an incredible item for survival for hardcore, so if you can, uh, for example, combine this one with some of the other farms we talked about for Westfall, you can make a pretty good amount of gold this early. This item is actually incredible and incredibly useful for hardcore, as you can use it for survival or to incapacitate mobs to loot an object. This is also the level bracket where you can start using your professions and make pretty decent gold with professions. So if you for example have herbalism and mining, you can start finding some pretty solid materials running through Westfall or the Barrens and looking for mining veins or herbalism spawns. If you have crafting professions, you can also use leather working to craft gear and sell to rogues and hunters, leveling up, and if you have tailoring, you can once again craft the bags and sell them. Eight sort of bags are in pretty decent demand at this level bracket, since the bag space is important to literally everyone, 
and the blacksmith can make weapons and weapon upgrades are huge so you can make some solid gold right here as well. Alchemists can take advantage of making health potions and sell those. People definitely want to keep at least one stack of health potions on hand at all times in order to increase their survivability. So being an alchemist and posting a macro in general chat once every 30 minutes could help you generate some very easy sales, especially since you are in that zone and posting in general chat, so you can even advertise that you will come to them. That way, they don't need to go to the auction house either, plus you can charge a premium rate. Do not underestimate how, like, do not underestimate the demand for healing potions on demand. Once again, these are hardcore servers with one life, so people will value their one life incredibly highly, and will definitely want to have a couple of healing potions in their bags. Now once again I will say the same thing here as I did in yesterday's video. From level 1 to level 20 I personally focus on just leveling as fast as possible, as most of the profits really come from being higher level. But getting to that big profit at higher level also requires you to level pretty fast, and to get to those high levels as quickly as possible. If you are not planning on speed leveling, getting some early gold in early levels and spending those golds on investments could benefit you greatly, which is why I'm doing this video series, as I personally think farming some gold in these level brackets can be incredibly beneficial for some people, especially those of you who will take a little bit slower than the typical speed leveler or streamer out there. Let's talk about making gold from level 20 to level 30 in Hardcore Classic WoW. This is the third video in a daily video series I am doing for the launch of the official hardware series, where my goal is to help you guys make gold while you're leveling on these official hardcore servers. For the most part I will talk about locations where you can farm for gold while also farming for experience, or taking advantage of farming and selling quest items to other people, considering I wanted to make gold and level up at the same time. But we will also touch base on professions and which items could be worth selling in this level bracket. So yesterday we covered level 10 to level 20, and the day before that we covered level 1 to level 10, but now this is where the real fun starts. As you start getting access to a lot more farms that are really viable for a long time to come, and you can start making some serious gold while you're leveling up. By this point, some players will probably be in the close to level 60 as well, so you can take advantage by farming some items that people will want to have at max level, or even to skill up their professions, and because they will have some raw gold laying around, you can start making pretty good pocket change while also farming at this level bracket. In this level bracket, you can also level up almost as quickly by farming mobs as you will by questing unless you're a hunter or a druid or a class with significant movement speed increase, because there's a lot of quests in this level bracket that requires a lot of running. By grinding mobs you can find one location and literally grind for several levels without requiring too much movement. You can also come by and check out my hardcore journey, including how I make gold on the official hardcore servers, live on Twitch, I am live every single day, pretty much 24-7, and I am most likely live as you're watching this video, so come by and say hello. So with that introduction, let's get into it. Like I just said, level 20 to level 30 is where you start getting access to some pretty sick materials. The first one is Elemental Fire. This is used for endgame potions specifically related to fire protection, which is very useful inside Molten Core and Blackwing Lair, the first raids in Classic WoW and will be on incredibly high demand for Hardcore. In this level bracket, you only really have one location to farm for these, which is in Stone Talon Mountains. Thankfully, both factions have a reason to go to Stone Talon, as both Horde and Alliance have quests both in this zone, and it also leads into Desolace. So you are most likely going here anyway, and this farm is honestly insane. Over here you have several mobs ranging all the way from level 23 to level 27, as you have lesser fire elementals, regular ones and greater ones. The lower level ones are more north in the circle, and the greater ones are south, so you can literally grind mobs here from level 23 to level 30 if you really want to, and that would actually give you a lot of gold that you can if you, if you sell these elemental fires when people start raiding. You also have the Crimson Whelms in Wetlands, which can drop two very lucrative items, small flame sacks and the tiny Crimson Whelpling. 
small flame sacks are also used in fire protection potions, and in Season of Mastery, I was able to sell some of these for up to 7 gold per piece, showing there's an obvious demand for these when raids become available and people start raiding. And I suspect that on hardcore servers these will be even more lucrative, as people will be spamming those protection potions for survival. 7 gold per item in a mid level 20 zone is pretty insane, these mobs are level 25 to 26, so you can pretty much grind here from level 24 to level 30, making insane amounts of gold. Also, if you happen to get the Tiny Crimson while playing, which then you can also sell that one for a pretty hefty chunk of gold, though that one is what I personally categorize as a luxury item, and it could take a long time to sell. But when someone wants it, they will drop some decent gold on it. I have sold some of these for a couple hundred gold each, but they are definitely not the main source of gold income from this farm. The small flame sacks will give most of the gold here. There is also a vendor in the middle of wetlands where you can vendor things when your bag becomes full, and this guy even sells you potions and herbs on a limited stock basis, so make sure to grab any of those if they are available. Another incredibly good item you can start farming for during this level bracket is Elemental Earth. This is also used in, for example, different types of elemental protection potions, as well as a bunch of other stuff. These are constantly on high demand, and the good thing here is that you can combine Elemental Earth farming with Elemental Fire farming in Stone Tunnel Mountains, where mobs are level 23 to level 27. You also have two locations in the Thousand Needles where mobs are level 28 to 29, where you can specifically target Elemental Earth without mixing it with anything else. Personally, I really like farming for Elemental Earth and Elemental Fire in this level bracket at the same place, because even though you also get access to them in Arathi Highlands and in Badlands, those spots are incredibly overfarmed and very popular. While the locations listed here are usually less competitive and therefore could be more lucrative, and better in terms of farming for both gold and experience at the same time. This is also the level bracket where you can start farming for large venom sacks. These might not be incredibly profitable at the start of hardcore series, but they are used in crafting, for example, strong anti venom through first aid as well as elixir of poison resistance, which is actually very useful in many locations, uh, situations, especially later in the game such as Ankirage for example, and depending on when people start doing Ankirage and do those difficult bosses, these could be in pretty high demand pretty quickly, so it's definitely a gold farm worth knowing about in this level bracket. Many of these farms for the large random sacks are also not tied to any quests, so they are in great locations to grind for mobs either way, plus you can get some pretty good gold at the same time while grinding. Just make sure to keep these large venom sacks stored in your bank or an alt, and actually sell them when people start doing Ankirage, because that is when the demand will skyrocket, potentially even Sulgurub. Additionally, if you have mining, this is an incredibly good level bracket for you as you will start encountering some silver veins, as long as you got your mining skill up to date. The skill required to mine silver veins is 75, and my favorite zones for farming silver veins are Red Ridge Mountains, Hills Radford Hills, and the Barrens, showing a classic farming round for each zone on the screen right now that you can try out if you're looking for those juicy silver veins. Alternatively, if you're already farming in these zones, for a different reasons like we just covered in yesterday's video, where we have one farm in the Barrens and one farm in Red Ridge, you can combine farming for silver veins with those gold farms, using the farming route shown on the screen right now, and simply looking around the area where you're already farming, instead of following the whole route. It is also worth noting that Alliance has access to a pretty significant questline in Duskwood which is started by handing in a bronze tube, an item crafted by engineering. So anyone with a combination of mining plus engineering can farm the materials to craft this item, and then sell it to the people who want to do that questline. A bonus tip here would be to stand in Duskwood, and post in general chat, that way you can make it more convenient for people to buy it from you. Additionally, if you don't have engineering but still want to try to capitalize on this strategy, here's a map with 7 different lower vendors that all sell in bronze tubes, but it's in limited stock and has a restock timer, so you have to be lucky to get one from any of those vendors. 
It is also worth noting that you can start getting a lot of gold from fishing in this level bracket, through for example blackmouth oil and even firefin snappers, but since nobody will be fishing while leveling anyway, I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but it's worth knowing about if you really need some gold. And that's pretty much what I have for you today, like and subscribe and check me out on Twitch for more hardcore stuff. So it's time to get you ready to get that level 40 mount. A lot of you might have leveled up in Classic WoW before, and when reaching level 40, you suddenly realize you are nowhere near having enough gold for that mount. Personally, on my Druid, which I got to level 60 in Hardcore Classic WoW when playing on Classic Arrow, I got my level 40 mount at level 48. I know several warrior friends who didn't get their mount before level 50, and a bunch of people get their level 40 mount a couple of levels after level 40. We've all been there, and it's annoying. So if you want to get your mount by level 40, that's what this video or series is for. Over the past few days I've been doing videos every single day on how to make gold in every level bracket, and today we're covering how to make gold from level 30 to level 40 in Classic WoW Hardcore. In this video series I mostly focus on showing you farming locations, that way you can literally make gold while leveling by farming mobs that you know drop valuable items, that way you are directly hitting two birds with one stone, farming gold and experience at the same time. But we will also touch a base on some profession usage and how to save yourself some gold at the same time to really help you minimax your gold while leveling. So let's get into some gold farming, and we'll do this on an item by item basis. So first up you have elemental fire, now for this level bracket you have an absolutely incredible farm. 4 Elemental Fire, located in Rathia Highlands, suitable for the high level 30s. Elemental Fire is used in crafting greater fire protection potions, which will be in pretty high demand. You also have Elemental Water locations in the same zone, but on the other side, on so the eastern side pretty much, in Rathia Highlands, also suitable for high level 30s or mid level 30s. You also have Elemental Farm number 2, which is this island right here in Strangleton Vale which is a very good island for farming both gold and experience, because there are a lot of water elementals here, they spawn pretty quickly, and you're in a location where a lot of people choose not to go, as there's only really one quest to do here, which in some cases is not even worth doing because of the travel time. Elemental water is used in crafting greater frost protection potions, which will be useful later down the line. You also have the earth elementals in Badlands which can be farmed for elemental earth. Over here you have three different types of earth elementals ranging from level 35-ish to level 43. All of these earth elementals are also tied to quests so there will be some competition, but it's still highly profitable and they are very good farms. Once again elemental earth is used in creating creating really, in crafting the greater nature protection potions and restorative potions just as an example. You also have small flame sacks which in this level bracket can be combined with dark whelplings and emerald whelplings farming, which can be done in the locations shown right here. For dark whelps I personally usually farm in badlands, but you can also do it in dust wallow marsh and for the emerald whelplings, you can do that in the swamp of sorrows. Once again, your main gold income source from these farms will be the small flame sacks, the whelplings are just a bonus. Also, if you happen to have skinning, farming the turtles in the Swallow Marsh is actually quite incredible for gold. They can drop turtle meat, for example, which can be handed in for a quest in Hillsbad Foothills for both factions, causing a demand for turtle meat by itself, since people need 10 of them for a quest. Plus, they will constantly be in high demand because people can use them to skill up cooking. Outside of that, you can also loot bags and greens from these turtles, and by skinning them you can also get turtle scales, which leather workers need a lot of in order to unlock tribal leather working, which a lot of leather workers really go for. That is for example the leather working section you need to do for the Devil Sword set. 
This is also the level back yet where you might want to start focusing a little bit more on raw gold farming, just to make sure you have enough gold for that level 40 mount no matter if you're able to trade or sell materials based on which challenge you are personally doing. For that purpose, here are some of my favorite raw gold farms for this level bracket. You have these two locations for gorillas in Strangleton Vale, and gorillas have a pretty solid loot table for items that vendor for hefty chunks. Quick note is that your banks can become full pretty quickly while farming gorillas, as they drop some barrels that vendor for a lot and only stacks up to 5 per stack. You also have the tigers in Badlands and the tigers in the Swamp of Sorrows, both of which drops pretty high vendor value items. The tigers in Swamp of Sorrows are also surrounded by spiders, which also have a decent loot table. You might also notice that all four of these raw gold farms so far are based on farming beasts, so if you have skinning you can make even more raw gold from these gold farms, whether that is raw gold from vendoring the leather you get from skinning, or if you want to sell the leather on the auction house for more gold, either way, it's just more gold. There is also another farm that I personally am quite a fan of doing while leveling, especially because many of the quests in this level range is incredibly competitive, so grinding mobs will often be just as efficient, if not even more efficient, than questing will be. The farm I reference here is doing the jungle remedy farm, which you can farm from the witch doctors and the medicine men in the northeastern part of Strangleton Vale, a farm suitable for level 32 to level 38. These guys have quite an incredible loot drop rate. First off, they can drop jungle remedy. Now, players need 7 of these for a Strangleton quest, giving a pretty significant demand for this one at launch. On top of that, they also drop Strangleton pages, which you can advertise for sale in general chat while farming, or post on the auction house and players will definitely buy the pages they need instead of farming for them, because the Strangleton chapter questline gives quite a lot of experience, and it can be very tedious to farm out the last few pages. On top of that, they can also drop healing potions and silk cloth, and they can even straight up drop herbs as well. I, it is also worth noting that this is a questing location, so there will be some competition, and you should expect more competition here than in most other grinding locations. This is also the perfect time to start talking about saving gold by not training all of your class abilities. This is where training your abilities start ramping up in cost, so in order to be able to afford that level 40 mount, you should really look into which abilities are worth training, and which ones you really don't need while leveling. Some of them, for example, if you're a mage, you don't need all of the max rank Frost Nova, so you can stick to rank 1, and the same thing goes for Concussive Shot, Wing Clip, basically anything with a slow, where increasing or actually upgrading the ability only upgrades the damage, while you're usually using that spell just for CC. Now, like for example, as a hunter, you can skip so many abil different abilities that you do not need while questing. As a mage, you can opt to skip fire and arcane abilities and only train frost abilities until you get to like level 50 plus just to get your mount at level 40, and so on. Lots of classes do have a bunch of abilities they simply don't need while leveling, and you can save so much gold by not training everything. Personally, I also use the add-on called What's Training, which shows me which abilities I get at which level, so I don't have to go back to my trainer all the time. This way, I can scout for important upgrades and visit my trainer whenever I have some significant abilities available for training. Now, that's just a couple of farming locations and gold making methods suitable for level 30 to level 40. You do have a bunch more, but I wanted to highlight my personal favorite. Tomorrow we are going to be covering the level 14 to level 15 level bracket, which is going to be insane, so subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for that one. Until then, you can find me live on Twitch and Kick, streaming Hardcore Classic WoW 24-7, and the links are in the video description. Now it's time to talk about how to make gold from level 14 to level 50 in Classic WoW Hardcore. By following the previous videos I've released on how to make gold up until level 40, most of you should have your level 40 mounts at level 40, and you can start farming the big golds now. Alternatively, if you don't have the mount just yet, 
you can use some of the methods to get you past that final stretch and get that mount. Level 40 to level 50 is actually quite an, an, quite an interesting level bracket for farming gold, because up until level 44, you technically never have to grind any mobs at all. You can quest all the way necessary, but in level 40 to level 50, at some point you will need to grind some mobs, as there simply is not enough quests to do in order to level up, especially if you want to level up effectively. Even if you do, every dungeon possible, including every dungeon quest once, so most leveling guides for example including Rested XP, Saigors, and I believe even Joannis, so I really do mean pretty much every single leveling guide, will tell you to grind mobs either from 43 to 47, or 44 to 48. By combining this grinding period with a lucrative gold farm, you can also secure yourself a couple hundred gold while doing the grinding that you're already doing for experience, so it's a win-win really. With that said, let's take a look at some locations where you are combining farming for gold while also grinding experience at the same time. Now the first farm worth highlighting is the Hate Quest Nagas in Feralize. This is where many leveling guides will also tell you to grind, so for example Rested XP and Saigors I do believe tell you to grind here, but they are actually worth grinding, because they can drop clams that, you, that then can drop golden pearls. That being said, since most leveling guides will tell you to grind here, there will be a lot of competition. Option number 2 is the one that I usually go for, is the Waste Wanderers in Tonares. It's not the pirates, but the bandits. These guys are actually quite good to farm, they drop a steady amount of raw silver, they can drop journeyman's backpacks, they drop mage weave cloth, and they can drop potions. They also drop Waste Wander water pouch, and you can hand in 5 of those through a repeatable quest, which gives you a small amount of experience, plus a goodie bag giving you food, drinks, and more potions. All of this combined means that you will get a hefty amount of healing potions and mana potions from these guys, which might actually sell for a decent amount on hardcore servers, where people want to have potions ready just in case. You also have another location in Tanaris which is killing the turtles in the northeast for turtle meat, golden pearls, and overall vendor items. This one is even better if you have skinning. Speaking of turtles and skinning, you also have this one in the hinterlands on the shore, now these turtles are quite high level so they are suitable for the upper part of this level bracket. On top of turtle meat they also give turtle scales when skinned, which leather workers will need for tribal leather working. So you know there's going to be a pretty high demand for that item too. Sticking with the hinterlands you can also farm for wild vines in these locations, which are used in crafting many popular crafts such as wild vine goggles and other previous items for raiding, mostly for casters. One more farm in the hinterlands while we're there is this one for thick wolf hides, which especially feral druids need for their wolf's head helm, so it's a pretty niche gold farm. Now if you have mining, you can also make start making insane amounts of gold in this level bracket. This is thanks to farming mithril, one of the mining ores that are in the highest demand and also the lowest supply, creating the perfect scenario for an item that could sell for a lot of gold. You could also either take one of the mithril farming routes and specifically run laps and look for mithril veins, or you can do what I personally do, check high density locations for mithril roughly every half hour, while also doing quests or doing other farms. For the purpose of that strategy, I will show you guys my two personal favorite high density spawn locations for mithril right here, one of which is in the hinterlands in the most famous ghost mushroom cave, and you also have the other one which are the underground hives in Tonaris, which are also definitely worth checking. Now because we're moving past level 40 now and into level 50, this is also the level bracket where you will start accumulating more gold than you currently need, Now, and you will also have what I personally refer to as leftover gold. This is where you need to start buying items that can go up in price later down the line, like for example a few weeks or a few months, just to make some very easy gold. Personally, I've seen items go up in price more than 10 times over like during the time span of a month in Classic WoW, which is because of how inflation works. More players get to level 60, people get access to more gold, items that are in demand goes up in price, so let's say you have for example 500 gold left over, now by not investing, logging out, and logging back in in 2 months, you will have 500 gold. 
but if you invest into items that go up in price 10 times, you can invest in those items, log back in 2 months, and suddenly you have 5000 gold from your 500 gold, effectively giving you 4500 gold for free in pure profit. Now since Classic WoW is a fairly solved game, having run through this game multiple times, counting only official Blizzard servers, we've had Original Vanilla, Classic WoW, Season of Mastery, and now Hardcore. So this is our fourth Vanilla WoW launch. You also have numerous private servers. So we know what's popular at which times and which consumables are used in which raids. Plus for Hardcore, any item related to your character's survival will be in even higher demand. For the purpose of giving you some easy investments, I usually put all of my leftover gold into small flame sacks and elemental fires, but if you want a list of all of my investments, which have given me tens of thousands of gold in Classic WoW, you can check out my Classic Hardcore Gold Making Guide through the link in the video description. This is currently a 134 pages long gold making document, specifically designed towards the official Hardcore servers, covering gold farms, investments, professions, and more. Now this is also the level bracket where professions start really skyrocketing in terms of profitability, so let's speak about that for a second. Now I already covered mining, but I only really gave you two optional high density locations to check for, so here are two mining routes as well, specifically aimed at farming mithril and true silver. This is also the level le what am I trying to say? This is also the level bracket where you can start pulling in decent amounts of gold through herbalism, specifically through ghost mushrooms and fire bloom, and I will show you my favorite routes right here. I usually farm fire bloom in Tanaris and Searing Gorge, just running around the zone. Ghost mushrooms can be found in the hinterlands in the cave. X marks the spot, and you need 245 skill to pick, pick it up. It is also worth noting doing the entire lap around the zone, and then check the cave like every single lap. Big plus if you have mining as well, as there can spawn up to 4 mithril veins inside that cave, plus 3 ghost mushrooms. If you have both herbalism and mining on the same character, I would also recommend using the add-on called switcher tracking, which will switch between which materials you're tracking every 2 seconds on an automated basis, which makes it feel like you're tracking both herbs and mining veins at the same time. Now, if you kept your fishing skill up to date, you can fish at the shore of Tanaris for both stone scale eel and firefin snappers, both of which are used in crafting endgame consumables used for level 60 raiding. It's not really useful for making gold while leveling as you get no experience from fishing, but if you desperately need gold and you don't mind sacrificing that experience per hour, fishing can give you some good amounts of gold. And that's pretty much what I have for you in this part of the video series, I'll see you in the next part which covers the final stretch to level 60. So, you want to hit level 60 with the most amount of gold possible, or maybe you just got bored of doing quests in Playlands or Winter Spring, and you're looking for a place to grind out the final stretch to max level, and you want to farm some gold while doing it. I've actually done some testing on the subject, and while questing from level 15 to level 60, I average 4 hours per level, and while grinding mobs I average 5.5 hours per level. So while questing at max efficiency is faster, grinding will give you a lot more gold and it requires a lot less brain power and effort and it's much safer. Instead of having to kill elites, named mobs or loot difficult to find objects, you can find a grinding location and just mindlessly grind mobs over and over and over and get a lot of gold while pushing yourself closer to the end goal of hitting level 60. So, today we're covering how to level from 50 to 60 while effectively making gold at the same time. For the purpose of that, we are focusing on a lot of locations where to find where you can grind experience by killing mobs while combining that with gold farming, by killing mobs that drop lucrative items, but we will also touch base on professions. So, well, let's get into it. First off, you have Ungoro Crater. Ungoro Crater is a location most of you will go to twice in this level bracket probably at level 51 and level 54. This is a great place to make gold in this level bracket, let's cover it step by step. First you have various items found all throughout Ungoro like the power crystals and Ungoro soil, all of which are worth gathering and selling to other players for gold. Then you have the living place, the fire elementals around the volcano, 
In the middle of Angoro, now these are incredible to farm for elemental fire, they spawn pretty quickly, and there's a bunch of them available over here as well. And then you have Devil Swords. This one is a little bit more risky, if you know, you know. Devil Swords are elites, and they hit pretty hard, but many classes can actually solo them quite easily. By having skinning, you can skin them for Devil Sword Leather, which is used in crafting Devil Sword Gauntlets, and Devil Sword Leggings, which is pre-raid best in slot, for a lot of classes, creating a massive demand for Devil Sword Leathers, and the actual items crafted from the Devil Sword Leathers, in an early launch environment, where people want to gear up their characters, before entering raids. Now, for the purpose of Devil Sword Devil Sword Leathers, it's also worth mentioning Nurgal, Nurgle, <laughs> an NPC in the Ungoro camp, which sells the recipe for Devil Sword Gauntlets on a limited supply basis. So it's worth checking if he has this item or the recipe available whenever you stop by, and if this is available, buy it. You can resell it for a guaranteed profit. On the topic of vendor flips, this is something I should have mentioned in the previous video, but since you're probably going to go to Tanaris quite a few times throughout your Angora journey anyways, I will mention it now. There's an NPC in Tanaris called Pestle Sug, which sells many alchemy recipes, including the Transmute Arcanite recipe. This is not really a limited supply by any means, meaning you can buy 10 of these, and I always make some very easy gold reselling these on the auction house for a profit because some people either can't be arsed to go into Tonaris to get the recipe, or they simply don't know where it's from and they just check the auction house and then buy it for whatever price it's listed for. Do you not underestimate how lazy some people are? It is also worth noting Kia in Winter Spring, which sells the patterns for Runecloth, Runecloth bags and also Runecloth gloves on a limited supply basis, once again guaranteed profit, and free gold by buying them from the vendor, if they are available, and sell them on the auction house. And you also have Sister in Winter Spring offering engineering recipes. They're definitely worth knowing about if you're questing or grinding in Winter Spring anyway, just stop by, check them out. If they have any recipes available, buy them, resell them, free gold. Going back to farming gold and grinding most for experience, you also have the powerful Mojo Farming. In Eastern Plaguelands, a very suitable gold farm for the higher levels, we're talking 57 to level 60, and these are used in a couple of endgame crafts. Farming for the Crusader formula, this one ain't that great for experience, but it's very good for gold. You also have the Water Elementals in Eastern Plaguelands for Elemental Water and Essence of Water. These are actually incredible and have been my go-to gold farm for Classic WoW for quite some time. You also have the Fellwood Bears, which I don't really have any other name for but Fellwood Bears, which are incredible for raw gold as they have a very lucrative loot table. This one is also, obviously, like very obviously, it's going to be even better if you combine it with skinning, especially because they can give you something called Warbear Leather. Now I can't really talk about level 50 to 60 without showing my personal grinding locations, which I used on my Druid in Classic Era when playing hardcore myself. You have the Furbolgs in Fellwood and Winterspring. These you can effectively farm all the way from level 48 to level 16 if you want to, as one of the locations offer, offers mobs at level 48, another one level 53, and Winterspring level 55 and upwards. An added benefit is that the Furbolgs in Fellwood can drop something called the Deadwood Feathers, which can be handed in for even more experience as well as Timber Maw Hold reputation. The Winter Spring Furbolgs also have a similar item called Spirit Beads, which can also be handed in for additional experience as well as reputation. On top of that, the Furbolgs in Winter Spring can drop Echoes as long as you can have done the pre-quest for Echoes first, giving you even more gold from those Echoes, plus they can also drop Journeyman's Backpacks or even Traveler's Backpacks, aka 14 slot and 16 slot bags, plus an added benefit here is that they drop a lot of endgame potions, health potions, and mana potions. They are incredibly easy to call, like, they're incredibly easy to farm. Just watch out for the Den Watchers, which will let out a cry at half health, calling for backup, so just pull them away from other mobs, and it's incredibly safe and easy. Now, Timber Maw Hold reputation can be incredibly helpful for a bunch of people, Specifically those of you with enchanting, as you need this reputation to get access to agility enchants, 
which can help you make gold through having access to exclusive enchants. Plus, Alchemist gets access to the Essence of Earth to Essence of Water recipe, which can actually be pretty profitable. It is also worth noting that if you kept your professions up to date, then Herbalism and Mining will start pulling in some pretty significant amounts of gold in this level bracket, and here's a Mining uh, Herbalism Farming route for Fellowood, which you can also use for Mining, and here you have a Mining Farming route for Ungoro, which once again can also be done and works with Herbalism, though the mining veins are usually closer to the mountains, while the herbs spawns are more in the middle, so focus on whatever you want based on that knowledge. Plus you also have this mining route in Eastern Platelands, which once again works with Herbalism, and farming for Herbalism and mining at the same time in Eastern Platelands is actually incredibly profitable. And that's the final installment of Making Gold While Leveling, the video series. Hopefully this video series gave you some examples of how to make gold while leveling, and I'm really hoping it helped you make a significant amount of gold while leveling as well. Let me know if you have any additional gold making strategies to use while leveling in the comments down below, and check out my classic hardcore gold making guide in the video description for even more gold making stuff. And that's pretty much it, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.